Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him. This is how our first reading concludes. The Lord was with Samuel. The Lord was with him. And having finished the Christmas season, we don't want to forget why Jesus was born into our world. To be with us. Emmanuel, God with us. And as we are now having moved into ordinary time, as unordinary as it may feel, we have the comforting thought that needs to be part of our ordinary knowledge that the Lord is with us. It's not only what we need during this time, but in every situation, all times of our life, that God is with us. In fact, that's what we're tried to be reminded of by the church throughout the course of the Mass. Every time we use the greeting, the Lord be with you. But it can feel like that the Lord is not with us, especially when things seem to go wrong. And this Old Testament passage about Samuel begins by describing that in his days were ones when the word of the Lord was scarce and vision infrequent. It seemed that God perhaps didn't speak to his people, that he was no longer with them. And we might be tempted to believe just that. But God, at times, just leaves us to our own devices. But that's actually never the case. That's never the case. What is really happening when we don't feel as though God is with us is that we're the ones who have ceased listening for him. The many distractions of the world, media, social media, politics, can make it very difficult to hear God. And just to look how hard God is trying to reveal himself to Samuel. He calls out to him multiple times, Samuel, Samuel. But Samuel has no idea that it's him. And this can happen for us too. God is constantly trying to speak to us and guide us. But we may not recognize his voice. It's also important to note when it is that God tries to communicate with Samuel. It says that Samuel was but a youth. See, God doesn't wait until we're old to be with us, to call us to follow him. He begins calling us while we are still young. And it makes sense because often the young can be more docile to God's call and his plan for them. Not yet perhaps being hardened by the hurts and pettiness of our fellow man. Which can lead us even to distrust God himself. Yet even if we fail to hear God when we are young, he will continue to pursue us. So if we don't always recognize God's voice at first, this, this truth points out just how important it is to continually strive to grow in relationship with him. Now Samuel does have a, a certain advantage in this. He's living at God's temple in Jerusalem. He's learning their Jewish faith one-on-one -on -one from the priest Eli. And so too, for us who have grown up in the practice of the faith, coming to Mass, perhaps taking part in different forms of Catholic education. This is certainly an advantage. But simply being around the faith is not enough. And I'm sure many of us know individuals who grew up in a Catholic environment who have left it behind. Our nation, too, had its origins in Christianity, but many of those values are being tossed aside. And just because Samuel is in the temple didn't mean he automatically recognized God's voice. Samuel did not recognize the Lord, it says. It depends upon how we are living out that faith on a daily basis, in our homes and in family life. In fact, it's possible, for example, say for parents, to either foster or stifle God's calling to their children. See, at first, Eli actually stifles God's call to Samuel. 
telling him to pay no attention to the voice and just go back to sleep. So how families talk about the faith, or perhaps don't talk about the faith, will have a deep impact upon a child's ability to hear God. For example, say a young man or woman is being called by God to the priesthood or religious life, but then they hear things like, you know, I don't, why, don't know why anybody would want to be a priest or a nun. I'm sure they can't be happy because they can't get married. You know, besides, I want grandchildren. Or things like, you know, the leaders of the church, they're either corrupt or cowards or those certain things that the church teach. Ah, we don't need to follow any of that. Nothing can do more to ensure a child will never hear God's call. Unfortunately for Samuel, though, Eli finally realizes what's going on, that God may be the one trying to speak to the youth. And so he gives Samuel very good advice. If you are called, reply, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So same thing, for example, for parents. What advice do you give your child? Often we might say something like, well, you can be whatever you want to be. It's not wrong, but it's just not complete. Even better advice would be to say, ask God what he wants you to be. God, what do you want me to do? To teach them to listen for him. And I can personally attest that when I finally began asking that of him for my own life, it changed everything. And in order to help anybody else to do this, like a child, to hear God's voice, we have to first do it ourselves. We have to more actively ask God what He wants of us before we can lead somebody else to do the same. We cannot give what we do not have. But when we do teach others, our children, to listen to God, they will better be able to understand when it is that God calls and what God asks of them. And this happens to Samuel. He follows Eli's advice, and when God calls him again, he replies, speak, your servant is listening. And God does speak to him. And he reveals to Samuel his vocation to be a priest and a prophet to lead the people to God. And that's the same thing for us today. Do we place ourselves in God's presence and offer ourselves to him and say to him, Here am I, Lord. I come to do your will. And he will guide you. It can be a scary thing at times to put that much trust in God because he might ask you to do something amazing that you feel is beyond what you're able to do on your own. And Samuel, too, he was scared at first. But Eli, again, he helps assure him. Eli has Samuel tell him everything that, that God said to him in the prayer. And with his greater experience of, of God, Eli is able to help affirm that this was indeed God calling him. It is the Lord. What is pleasing in the Lord's sight, the Lord will do. So it's good for us, too, to get advice from those that we trust, those who are familiar with the ways of God, to help us discern if what we're hearing, if the action that we're being moved toward is God's will. If it is him, have no fear. God is the one who will make it happen. He is the one in charge. He will be with you. Be not afraid. So if you're concerned about all the disturbing, dissonant voices of our world today, and you wonder who the coming generations will be listening to? Well, if we don't teach our children how to speak and to listen for God, then they will hear and follow other voices. We cannot teach them unless we ourselves are listening first to his voice. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And in listening, we will hear Jesus, and in hearing, we will know that he's here. Samuel grew up and the Lord was with him. The Lord is with you.